What's up, y'all? I said, what's up, y'all? Look at me when I'm talking to you, bro. Nah, I'm just messing with y'all, man. This is Knockout Boxing 86 TV, and we in here. So check this out, bro. Before I get going on today's video, everybody should know what to do by now. You come through, you hit the like button, you subscribe to the channel, and you share the video, bro. When you do those things, all you're doing is putting your seatbelt on when you hop in my car. And don't forget to comment down below so we can chop it up and talk boxing. I really enjoy doing that with y'all, but I can't do it with you unless you leave a comment. So be sure to comment down below so we can chop it up and talk boxing. And if you want to have me hop on the panel or if you want to collaborate with me, reach out to me on my email address at knockoutboxing86 at yahoo.com. Again, that's knockoutboxing, the number eight, the number six, at yahoo.com. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get it popping. And let's get into today's video. And today, we're bringing y'all another fight prediction, bro. We did two fight predictions yesterday. We're going to do one today and two tomorrow, bro. I'm bringing y'all five fight predictions this week. We're doing the entire Tank Davis and Mario Barrios card. And then I'm also going to predict the Vasily Lomachenko versus Masayoshi Nakatani fight. And this one right here, we're doing Erickson Lubin versus Jason Rosario, bro. We're doing Erickson Lubin versus Jason Rosario, bro. Let's do the tail of the tape, talk about their fighting styles, bro, and let's break it down, pass the victory, and pick the fight, bro. Let's get it all done. We got a lot to break down, so let's get into it, man. Um, Erickson Lubin, 25 years old, fighting out of Florida, born and raised in Florida. Um, 25 years old, as I said, five nine and a half with a 74 and a half inch reach, bro. Um, he's 23 and one with 16 knockouts and his one loss. He got starts by Jamel Charlo. Everybody that, that really follow boxing like that, man, we all know what happened, man. Charlo starts his ass in the first round, bro. Um, for Jason Rosario, man, he's fighting out of the Dominican Republic. He's 5'11", but he has a 70-inch reach. So he's a taller man, but his arms are shorter, bro. Um, he has a 70-inch reach. He's 26 years old. He's 22-1. and one. Um, So 20 wins, 2 losses, and 1 draw. Um, he has 14 knockouts. And both of his losses, he got his ass knocked out, bro. Both of his, ass, both of his losses, he got his, his ass knocked out. Now, let's talk about their fighting style, bro. And then let's talk about their pass to victory. And then let's go ahead and pick the fight. Um... For Erickson Lubin, man, he's an extremely skilled southpaw, bro. Extremely skilled southpaw. They call him Hammerhand, Sledge, and, 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 and Jack. Jack and Sledge. I don't know, bro. His name is Hammerhands because he got power in both hands, bro. But he's very, very technically sound, bro. He's athletic, but he doesn't use over movement. He keeps himself in good position to fire back off on your ass. You know, so he, he, he has good distance control with his feet um, and his movement. Um, that left hand, because, as I said, he is a southpaw. He paws with that jab. He has a good variation on his jab. He'll use it to paw, to, to, to find range for his left hand. He'll stab that jab down to the body. And then he'll also use a good jab up top, bro, with that right hand. But that left hand, though, bro, that backhand, that power hand, however you want it, bro. You want to counter left hand straight? He got that. You want him to roll into a counter uppercut? He got that. You want him to time your ass with a straight left hand? He got that. He even throw the left hand from underneath to come up under your guard a little bit. It's like an upper straight. That's right. I made up my own punch. A upper straight. A, a, a straight cut. A upper straight upper cut. Bro, it come like this, bro. It's like it's like that right there, bro. He throw that bitch. And the shit works, bro. The shit works, you know, dr dramatic, dr drastically, dramatically, drastically. Y'all know what I'm trying to say, bro. Leave me alone, man. And then uh, he got the left hook, obviously, bro, to come around your guard. He's just... A well-schooled, very technical, athletic fighter with an extremely bright future, bro. And he has proven that when you take a L, depending upon your character, depending upon who you are, bro, you can bounce back from that shit for all you other young fighters. Because he ain't even considered, you know, with the younger fighters, bro. But the man's 25 years old, bro. The man's 25 years old, bro. So he's coming into his prime. He seems to have learned from his mistakes. Getting with Kevin Cunningham, bro, who also led, like, Corey Spinks to a championship. Kevin Cunningham led um, Devin Alexander to some championships. Getting with Kevin Cunningham, bro, was a great move for Erickson Lubin, bro. And it's, it's paying off, bro. He's getting more technically sound. You can see the confidence, bro. You can see that, you know, he's just well-schooled. And Kevin Cunningham is great with, with Southpaw fighters, bro. He just is, bro. He's like the southpaw fighter guru. You know what I mean? You go back and you look at Tank Davis's performance. To me, the best I've ever seen Javante Tank Davis look was when he was in, no, no shade, 
to um his current trainer. No no shade to cut it from the wire. No shade, bro. But when Javante Tank Davis went and did that camp with Kevin Cunningham, bro, and I think he fought like Quail Yard, Quail the Yard, Jose Quail Yard, bro, he looked better than I seen him look, bro. He was pumping that jab out. He was countering everything that Quail Yard could throw, bro. He just looked very sharp in that fight, bro, being a southpaw himself. And Lubin has gotten sharper and sharper. And I think that, um, you know, he's just an extremely talented and very, very good fighter. His opponent, um, Jason Rosario, bro, is a powerhouse, bro. Very, very physically big and physically strong for the division. Great left hook. A pressure fighter that comes forward, bro. That's going to make it a dog fight. That wants all the smoke with you, bro. So both of these guys, man, got very, very good power, bro. Very good power. And they both have been knocked out before. They both have shown that they can be hurt. Which makes this a dangerous fight for both fighters, bro. Jason Rosario's path to victory, let's get into it. For him, bro, he got to make Lubin extremely uncomfortable. He got to power through Lubin. And he got to make this an ugly fight. If this is a boxing match from distance, Jason Rosario ain't winning this fight, bro. He's just not. If it's a boxing match from distance where he's just not able to pressure Lubin, where he's not able to get to Lubin and make it a dog fight, make it ugly, similar to the way that he did with Julian J. Rock Williams, when he upset him, then he'll have a chance to win, bro. If he if he's able to get through all of that, bro. If he can pressure him the same way, he can get that left hook off. That's so deadly. That left hook he got is so powerful. He can get that off. He can pressure um he can pressure Lubin. Hopefully get to his chin, touch him up, bro, and he can get him out of there by knockout. If this shit go to a decision, I don't think there's any way that we'll be able to say Jason Rosario won. Cause if it's going to decision to me, that means he's having trouble getting in on Lubin. That means Lubin is, is scoring points and outboxing him and, and, and getting his way to a victory, bro. For Lubin, he has a more versatile way to victory. I think he's the better boxer. I think he got more skills. I think his defense is better than Rosario's. He's a, he's a lot harder to hit to, than Rosario, in my opinion. So um, I think he can outpoint Rosario. And then also, you know, 23 wins, 16 wins by way of knockout. Lubin got power in both hands. Rosario is chinny. Not only is he chinny, he got stopped with a jab to the body by Charlo, bro. His body weak, too. So he done been knocked out in multitude of ways, bro. You feel what I'm saying? And then, you know, a lot of people ain't talking about this, but they got a common opponent. They got a common opponent. His name is Nathaniel Gallimore, bro. Lubin box circles around Gallimore. Messed him up. Beat him badly, bro. And I don't believe in the triangle theory, but shit. Lubin box circles around Gallimore. You know what I'm saying? Won nine to ten rounds. If you go look at the scores, I think the ju all three judges had that shit like 99 to 91 or 98 to 92. So it was a wide-ass margin for Lubin. Meanwhile, Rosario got stopped by Gallimore in the sixth round, bro. Got stopped by him. I think what people are forgetting, bro, is that when Rosario beat Julian Williams, bro, that was an upset. And it was an upset for a reason, bro. And so Lubin can beat him by knocking him out or he can beat him on points, bro. What do I think is going to happen, bro? And what is my pick? Hmm, man, I'm picking Jason Rosario, bro. To get his ass knocked out. That's what I'm picking. Jason Rosario getting knocked out on Saturday night, bro. Here's why, bro, for a few reasons. Number one, confidence, bro. Since um, Lubin got knocked out by Charlo, he has had five fights, bro, to get his bearings back, work his way back up, show he can really be in this shit. And he's had fights against good components, fought, fought Gosher, fought, um, fought Gallimore, and he's been outclassing guys. He's been um he's been winning and he has built himself back up to where I think he's gonna be ready for the moment, bro. And I don't know if Jason Rosario, I'm not saying he's not confident. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying that this is his first fight since getting knocked out by Charlo, bro. His first fight. So I, I just don't know what where his head gonna be at, bro. I don't know where his head gonna be at. Number two, corner, bro. Corner while I'm picking Lubin. I got to get an edge to Kevin Cunningham, bro. I got to get an edge to Kevin Cunningham. No disrespect to Jason Rosario's um, trainer. But I know Kevin Cunningham is trained and built up world champions. 
I don't know about Jason Rosario's trainer. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong in the in the comments section, but I don't know any world champions that he's trained. I don't know his name to be 100% completely honest with y'all, bro. So I got to get an edge to Jay, to um Erickson Lubin in the corner, bro. I think he'll have a better game plan going in because I think Rosario is easier to game plan for. Why he is a dog, why he is powerful, why he is strong, why he got power. You know what he going to do, bro. He a pressure fighter. He coming for you. Feet ain't all that good. Lubin has more tools in his toolbox and more skills to be able to game plan for Rosario. That's another reason I'm picking him. And then, first and foremost, the two fighters, you know, the two fighters inside the ring. The main reason, bro, I just believe the way I see the fight going out, bro, I think Lubin is going to be able to hit Jason Rosario at will with that left hand, bro. At will to the body, at will up top. And I think... He's gotten better with his movement and knowing where his weaknesses are. That's what Cunningham has worked on him so much with, bro. And if you notice, he actually does what you probably tell South Pauls not to do against Orthodox fighters. He circles to his left. And they got him circling to his left a lot because his weakness has always been the left hook coming from an Orthodox fighter, which Rosario throws very well, bro. And by circling to your left, you're getting, that, you're getting away from that punch. And they believe enough in Rosario's, uh, I'm sorry, in Lubin's defensive ability that he'll see the right hand coming. But the punch that he don't see that always seems to get him is that left hook, bro. And so he's able to he's able to move around that, in my opinion, bro. And he's able to and he's gonna be able to catch Rosario coming in with left hands. I just think he's b way better from a distance, like way way better. And I think when they get inside, bro, he got great left uppercut steady throw. He got a good right hook of his own. And he just got better skills than Rosario, in my opinion. And he's going to be more confident. He has the better trainer. I just think all signs are pointing to Erickson Lubin putting on one of the best performances of his career, bro. I, I expect this to be a culmination of the five fights that he's been building up to. I think he's been building up to the moment to say, yo, I'm back. And I think on Saturday night, Erickson Lubin going to let the boxing world know. Excuse me, let the 154-pound division know. Look, bro, I'm back. I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm back. I need my shot back, bro. I need my shot back. And I think that's what we're going to see, bro. Rosario, no shade to him. He might have his moments in this fight, bro. But I see him getting outboxed. I see him getting picked apart by Lubin. And I see him getting stopped, bro. I see him getting stopped. I just don't think he has a good variation of skill sets and a good thing and a good way to get inside, bro, because his head movement ain't that good. You know what I'm saying? He he gets hit often and he gets wobbly, bro, when you hit him flush, bro. And I think that left hand and Lubin is gonna do damage to him, bro. I see him probably getting stopped by either a straight left or one of them little left that come like a straight upper, bro. That's what he gonna get caught with, bro. Cut on his way in, bro. He don't really counter punch all that well. You know what I'm saying? Rosario damn sure can't fight going backwards. He got one way. He got to come at you. And that shit going to be easy for for Lubin and, and Cunningham and that team to, to prepare for, bro. I think he picks him apart, bro. That's my pick. I got Lubin by knockout. I'm going to say... I'm going to say... I'm going to say he do it a little bit later than Charlo did. I think Charlo did it in the 6th or the 7th. I'm going to give him to about round 8. But don't be shocked if the shit ends sooner than that, bro. Don't be shocked if the shit ends sooner than that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to give Rosario the respect to saying he get knocked out in round eight, bro. Somewhere between round six and eight, though, he going he going to night. He going night-night, bro. He going to sleep. He going to sleep, bro. Knockout. Lubin. That's my pick. Who you picking, bro? Let me know in the comment section. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Share the video. You just putting your seatbelt on when you hop in my car when you do those things. And if you want me on the panel, knockoutboxing86 at yahoo.com is the email. I appreciate y'all watching. Everybody enjoy your day. And with that, we out of here. Peace.